here we go again. Oh my god. Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dan, aka Lucent. I'm a music producer and songwriter. And today I'm going to be reacting to How I'm Feeling Now by Charlie XCX. So let's go. Hi guys. Hello. Um, so uh, first off, apologies for any background noise there might there might be in this video. It's the hottest day of the year, so I've got really early so I can beat the heat. It's gonna be like 34 degrees today. So I've got all the windows open. I did have the fan on, but it was too loud. So currently there's drilling. <laughs> okay, Charlie XCX. Again, more apologies because I haven't done a Charlie XCX video in ages. Um, I went off on a little bit of a tangent with all the hyper pop stuff. There's new albums to do, and it's like, oh, okay. And Kate Bush. Yeah, basically, I've been off. I've been off on a tangent for like the last two months, um, and haven't got back to doing Charlie XCX since Crash. But here we are. I'm hoping there are still Charlie XCX fans uh, on the channel. I guess we'll see. Um, I loved Crash. I really loved it. I'm still listening to Constant Repeat. Got that on constant repeat. Um, and I really enjoy Pop 2 as well. Unlock It Lock It is still on repeat in my on my playlist as well. So I've been discovering her and I've been enjoying it quite a lot so far. Um, however, I have not listened to her How I'm Feeling Now, which is the one that got everybody talking at the beginning of the pandemic. I remember kind of like stuff going on about her making it from home and making everything in her bedroom, but I haven't heard of it, any of it at all. I've heard it's quite hyper poppy, so... Here we go. <laughs> it's going to be a good thumbnail. <laughs> but before we get started, if you're new to the channel, then make sure to click that subscribe button and make sure to ring the bell for notifications so you know when all of my videos are coming out. Also, give this video a like if you like it too. <clears throat> and also, I've updated my Patreon recently. We're on Patreon 2.0. If you're on the third tier of the Patreon, you will be able to request a reaction from me. So I'll react to any song that you want me to do if you're on that top tier. And also once a month, I'll be doing one album reaction uh, request as well. They're both exclusive tiers, they're both limited, so I don't completely overwhelm myself with work because I'm that popular. Um, <laughs> I've like limited it and it'll be like, one person wants you to do it. But yeah, so if you want to be that person and if you want to request a song reaction from me, then head over to the Patreon where you can do that. Um, you can also check out my videos early as well um, and uncut, links in the description. Okay. Let's go on to the video. Right, set up my pillows so I don't hurt my back because I'm 30 almost and now I have to think about stuff like that. Okay, let's go. Okay, so this is song number one. This is Pink Diamond. Oh, God, here we go again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pink Diamond in the dark. I just want to go real hard. I just want to go real hard. Pink Diamond in the dark. I don't know what that means. on the video, Jackie's Wow, it's quite like. Oh my god. I appreciate the rhythm of it. Never heard it rap quite so fiercely. So it's all about being online, yeah. Like dressing up for the video chat and like that kind of the lockdown culture. This is definitely more hyper poppy, isn't it? Like. <laughs> Ooh, that's cool. So who did the production on this album? Well, I just want to go real hard. Pink diamond in the dark. That was, uh, yeah, definitely more hyper poppy. Uh, you'll have to let me know what, like, how much production Charlie was doing and how much she was doing, on, uh, how much it was like other people and stuff. And wasn't there some kind of collaborative thing on TikTok or something? Anyway, whatever. I just want to go real hard. I just want to go real hard. Pink diamond in the dark. It was giving me pop, like a lot of the pop, kind of pop two energy. It was definitely reminding me of Sophie. I appreciated like the kind of really kind of pulsing direct. The rhythm of it was really insistent, wasn't it? Yes. And also, <laughs> um, I'm not sure what the pink diamond refers to specifically, but it seems to be like, she's almost like there's this el element of being trapped within the screen, you know, trapped within her own home, like we all were at the beginning of the pandemic. It's very much giving me that kind of anxious kind of energy that we all kind of felt in lockdown, that kind of crazy weird feeling that it like, that, that really encapsulates that moment, you know, you know, video chat is the only place where we can get social interaction, you know. Look at the lyrics. I just want to go real hard. Um, wish that you could come around, pick me up in your car. Yeah, every night kind of feels like it's the same. 
I'm a pink diamond and I need space. I'm on lime and I'm feeling so glamorous. Watch me shine for the boys and the cameras. In real life, could the club even handle us? So yeah, it's like, I need, I want to break out. And it's, it's almost like maybe this song is representing her breaking out of that monotony and is kind of an outlet for her frustration. You know, that kind of what that's what it feels like, you know, like I want to be in the club. I want to be dressing up and I want someone to be coming around and picking me up and us going out and doing what we normally do, like the normal life stuff. But I can't because we're trapped indoors and we're not allowed to leave the house. It's kind of weird looking back on it now, isn't it? It kind of like feels like such a moment in time, even though it was only a couple of years ago. OK, let's go on to the next one. This is song number two. This is Forever. Oh my god. Ooh, do I like that? That's really warm. I really like this, actually. Hey. It really does feel like this. the sounds of this album are kind of reflecting her frustration, you know, and that kind of fuck it attitude. <laughs> Even when we're not together. I like this one. It's definitely a bit softer, but I say that. The distortion is mad. It's like, it kind of goes against every, all the kind of like technical producer kind of uh, lessons, doesn't it? But it sounds so cool. And it gives it such a warm feeling when you have those kind of warm chords with it as well. You know, it's like, yeah, it's nice. And I love how the chorus kind of loses the distortion when she goes into like, I will love you forever. It's like a reprieve, isn't it? It's like a kind of a break from the, from the heaviness, you know? Ooh. Oh, okay. Nice. She lo does love a smooth transition into the chorus, doesn't she? I'm starting to really get a sense of Charlie's style, you know, throughout all these albums. Because although they sound quite different, there are hallmarks, aren't there? Cool. Yeah. I really like that one. That wasn't what I was expecting. And it kind of felt like she merged the super high distortion of this kind of hyper pop sound that's been, particularly the distortion sound has kind of come from like TikTok and people recording stuff off their phones and stuff. And she's taking that harshness and utilizing it, isn't she? Because she's using the warmth of that, of that distortion to kind of give it this real rich, kind of melancholy in the in the verses and then she takes it away for a really great effect when she's kind of saying you know i will love you forever it's almost like you know we get a break from the distortion and she's kind of maybe getting an emotional kind of relief from the frustration of the situation of being stuck in lockdown because her love for this person is almost like helping her to forget about it momentarily and the distortion being taken away in that chorus kind of represents that feeling it kind of replicates that feeling of reprieve that the love is giving her, you know? Yeah, that's nice. Let's have a look at the lyric. Cause you and I drove for miles, knew I'd be here, be here, be here with you. We took a drive in the blue. So she's looking back because obviously she's not driving anywhere. Now we got to let this go drive the car off the road. She's referenced that before, isn't she? I can't remember which song it is. A lot of the lyrics are quite repetitive and it's almost like these feelings that are swirling around in her head, like, do -do 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 you know, tumbling on top of one another you know especially in the end you know yeah it kind of sounds like she's getting lost in the memory of the love and that's the that's the thing that's giving her this break it's like living in her memories that was something that a lot of us went through in lockdown there was a big surge in kind of like retro things you know like people buying records people maybe like getting into old video games and stuff it was almost like a kind of uh comfort us kind of reliving the memories of our past because we couldn't make any memories and that is what she's doing with this love she's like like living in those memories of of, of her love of this person um and i love how it's referenced in the production of it as well very cool let's go on to song number three three this is claws okay Ooh, interesting sounds there, like a crinkly thing. When everyone said this is like the crazy hyperpop album, it's still got a lot of melody and music to it, you know, it's not just noise based, which is kind of what I was expecting. Ooh, 
It's very wordy, isn't it? A lot, and I think that is kind of representing her, you know, mental state. You know. I like the rhythm of this one. And the sounds aren't too abrasive, you know? Like Pink Diamond definitely was going really, really hard. But there's, defi there's some definite softness, you know? Oh, this is taking me right back. 2005 vibes. <laughs> Ooh. Wow, that just completely fell apart at the end, didn't it? Like, it was quite cool to kind of like have this kind of cool, really, really cool build up that feels like it's going to go into something, but instead just have it completely break down and fall apart. It's quite cool. I th yeah, it just, just like the attitude towards making these songs really feels like a kind of frustrated kind of it, I don't I'm just going to put it out type attitude. And it's quite unique in the way that it's kind of created these songs that are very almost like yeah you know like just a this kind of being get it out you know let's see what this song is about it's almost like she's maybe imagining like what she would like to do you know um with this person that she really like like you know likes confessing her kind of infatuation with a person i'm not sure what the kind of deeper levels of the lyrics might mean though so let me know what do you think of course in the comments I think it's quite kind of poetic to have like a bloody uh, circular saw going off in the background of a hyperpop album. Probably just adds to the to the sound. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next one. This is song number four. This is seven years. So hard, things that we've been through. Yeah. Mm. So I made my house Positive. Home Optimistic. Right nice. And you live inside a lie with you. Wow, I used to live inside a lie with you, but now we're honest and it feels so good. Nice. Nice. This album is not what I expected, actually. Huh. I'm guessing she's been with someone for that long. It's like... She's got to this point where she can be completely honest with him. Wow, she's really like codependent with this person, you know. Nice. Sounds like a, a can being open, doesn't it? It does kind of feel like there's a nostalgic element to a lot of the songs on this album, doesn't it? Yeah, you'll have to let me know who BJ Burton is on that one. Yeah, she's it's another song about kind of reminiscing, isn't it? You know, she's looking back at her relationship with this person and kind of, you know, looking back at the hard things they went through and kind of thinking, you know, we're here now. We're going through this thing together. And, you know, now I feel like I'm completely comfortable with you. You know, I quite like that. It's a nice song, actually, and I really like how unexpectedly, like, sensitive it is, you know? So much of hyperpop feels like a kind of wall, like a frustration. It does have a frustrating, anxious kind of backdrop, but, like, she's kind of assessing how there's actually moments of, like, softness and intimacy within that you know it's very cool yeah it's and it feels really unique like it feels like it's not overthought and i think like in doing that she's created something that that feels very different i love that line that i used to live inside the lie with you and now we're honest it feels so good so in terms of her relationship right i feel like uh you have to remind me but wasn't she with this guy for i'm presuming seven years um but didn't she break up with him in crash like in one of the songs in Crash, it was about, like, the intensity of, like, lockdown together. Because this one's really kind of, like, getting lost in their relationship and her reflecting on how comfortable they are with one another, you know? There, there is this kind of sense of, like, waiting for it to all blow up. She kind of says, I know that look in my eyes means always, even if we fall apart, split two ways. Yeah, so strange, always. So it's almost... So it's, and she said in the previous song as well, like, when we're not together anymore, I'll still love you and all this kind of stuff it's almost like she's waiting for it to all blow up in her face maybe she's had like 
bad experiences and kind of has kind of trust issues because it does seem like throughout her albums she is almost like waiting for the shit to hit the fan, you know? Even in a song that's quite kind of romantic. Let's go to the next one. This is song number five. This is Detonate. Okay, we've got a ticking. We've got an arpeggio. I like it. Nice. Oh, I'm feeling this. This has got Unlock It, Lock It energy. Nice. This is really giving me like 2002 kind of, feels like chocolate, kind of, that kind of early noughties weird kind of bright pop energy. It's that arpeggio, it's very emblematic of that. Detonate. Maybe that's what it's about, like waiting for her relationship to detonate. Mm. Nice. Actually, it's really giving me a bit, like, making, reminding me of Our City, who was like my favourite artist when I was like 16. In 2008, 2009. It's the ticking of the bomb. I don't, I don't trust myself at all. Why should you love me? Yeah, she's waiting for the relationship to blow up in her face. Wow. It really feels like it's kind of her getting her in her own head, like, and now kind of getting to a place where she's like, why does this person even love me at all? You know? It does feel like we're kind of getting lost in her head with her, you know? Oh. Tempo. Oh my god. Oh wait. Oh. oh. That's very cool. Like <laughs> to kind of stop the song and then have this like but it's like almost like a distant explosion, isn't it? It's very foreboding, you know. Very cool. I love that. Produ the production element of that, like, for it to kind of, like, you know, ticking energy at the beginning and it kind of being insistent all the way through, kind of, like, it's building up this tension all the way through. And then to have it kind of, like, build up the tempo towards the end was such a clever way of, like, replicating this idea of it kind of, like, ramping up towards a detonation. Yeah. Very, very, very cool. Yeah. That really represents for me, like, how I was feeling at that point as well it kind of felt like this kind of anxiety and the depression and the kind of the feeling of being trapped and like the world kind of ending was giving us all this kind of what well, for me it was like I felt like every day I was getting a little bit like worse I was like trying to like pin myself down to like daily routines you know I was playing Animal Crossing every day I was going for a run every day I was doing yoga I was working on piano and stuff but as a lot of that stuff was kind of falling away I was finding myself ridiculously anxious and scared and like trapped I think this is her going through that but it kind of reflecting on her relationship because she's looking at her partner who she's been with for seven years and she's just thinking why do you love me I don't trust myself like I, like this like you know it's very very self kind of deprecating her kind of self-esteem is at such a low that she's questioning why the person that she's been with for a long time questioning why he even loves her a very real very vulnerable thing for her to show share with us it's very much like emblematic of the kind of headspace that we all had at that time for me it was expressing in slightly different ways i think i was getting very anxious about my music and thinking about like how i couldn't write and how i was like failing at it and whatever and also how I was focusing on this idea of being trapped like I'd been traveling and like suddenly I was living at home and what couldn't leave the house and I was kind of obsessing on this thing that I was trapped yeah shit <laughs> as a song though really like it I really like the sounds I really like the that arpeggio is really really cool close myself off in new ways building walls he might say I can't turn back I've been reading for 12 days when I start to see if it gets real bad. Hurt me, no, you won't hurt me. I'm about to detonate, pull you close and then I'll be gone. Building up of anxiety, like feeling as if you're about to explode. And she's like trying to explain herself. It's like a kind of like a train of thought where she's just like, you know, uh, I just feel like everything's bad. I'm f***ed up, like, like I'm going to pull you close and then I'm going to explode and then like I'm going to ruin everything. And then she's like, oh no, I'm sorry. I'm just like really in my feelings right now. I'm just really, it's like that kind of thing you know like in a song and she's kind of talking herself to the point where she is going to explode do you love me should you love me 
it's like and then it just kind of goes on, on, on you know it's like wow that's so good <laughs> like <laughs> let's go on to the next one this is song number six this is enemy i like that guitar they say keep your friends close put your closer i'm so far away sometimes i'm distant so who's her enemy? Maybe it's the boyfriend. I, feel guilty. I, feel nervous. I wasn't expecting this to really dive into her relationship in this in the way it has. Wow. Nice. Oh. oh I love that pad. It's really warm and like a wave, you know, it's like love it. Oh, some of the sound design on this album is really great. The tough journey surrounded of people. Wow. I feel like I'm learning that about myself. It hurts here. Yeah. Wow. Oh my god. This is great. <laughs> so cool. Nice. Wow. I'm not sure who her enemy is. Maybe it's like herself. You know? Yeah. Oh, God, that was really great. Yeah. The God, that voice note in the middle about her kind of, like, understanding things about her life. God, isn't it just, isn't that just, like, it felt like she was maybe talking to her into, like, her webcam, you know, just doing really deep confessionals online, which is just so emblematic of what it was like in lockdown to kind of go through something so heavy and to kind of exist through a screen confessing deep dark things you've learned about yourself over like you know zoom or whatever is so it's just like really explains where we were at you know it got really heavy didn't it i'm not sure who her enemy is maybe it's herself i think she, maybe she's having that realization i really like that song though it, it had a bit more of a kind of what i don't know like I don't know. <laughs> it had a kind of warm musical feeling to it. And actually this album's a lot more musical than I was expecting it to be. Um, I think people have built it up to be very, very hyper poppy. And actually it's kind of, yeah, I mean it is obviously, but it's like smooth and beautiful at points and intimate, you know, um, and melancholic. I see keep your friends close, but you're closer, like enemies closer, yeah. I love when you're here. I'm so far away sometimes, I'm distant, yeah, you might help me, intimacy, I'm a bit, I'm scared, maybe, maybe you can reach me, maybe you're at my, you're my enemy, and I'll finally let you come a little close to me. Oh god, she's really like, the anxiety is just getting to her. She's kind of saying, I've let you so close that you could completely ruin me, you know, and maybe you're, you're the enemy, maybe I've been tricked into like letting you get close to me it's really really like getting to a point where she's just thoughts on thoughts on thoughts on thoughts and she's going down this like anxiety hole with it with all these songs it's fascinating to listen to and just like so relatable Fuck. i think it's a tough journey to be on whilst you're around a lot of people i feel like i'm learning that about myself and i don't really understand it yet it hurts here i loved that that was really 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 great the kind of voice memo kind of e-bit very emotionally vulnerable moment really pulled it to somewhere really close and really vulnerable i loved it yeah really good okay let's go on to the song next song this is song number seven this is i finally understand there was a little bit daniel beddingfield those drums <laughs> Shit. God, the therapy on this album, shit. So she's kind of like, having gone through all this kind of like anxious depression, she's starting to actually recognize what she's doing, you know? I like that she kind of took it to a, like a, a kind of uh, garagey kind of place there. Yeah, I liked that. Yeah, shit. <laughs> like, this album is so much better than I thought it was going to be. I, like, I mean that in the best way. I kind of thought it was going to be a bit of an experiment 
you know, um, and I guess it, I mean, it was white, right, you know, and I thought maybe because it was quite experimental, like, it would kind of have a very scattered approach, a very weird train of thought, but actually, like, it really is very well done. Um, It kind of feels like we're kind of following her inner monologue as she's going through this, like, monumentous world event, and what she's actually focusing on is, like, going very internal in terms of, like, assessing herself in a kind of ther- in a kind of therapy sense, um, but also assessing a relationship as well, and it's like you know what I was expecting at all, um, and I really like it. I really like it. This is like some of my favourite stuff from her. So it kind of feels as yeah, like these lyrics kind of seem to be representing like her, her walls coming down, her like going inward, her you know, the situation kind of almost forcing her to look look, look in on, on herself. Yeah, we're sticking close now, I understand that, baby, I love you so bad, because lately I finally understand that maybe this feeling I've found, it might kill me. My therapist said I hurt myself really bad. You told me it's fine, let me cry and hug it out. Wow. So, like, the partner is being extremely, like, understanding and just letting her kind of go through all this stuff, you know. And so it feels like a breakthrough, doesn't it, this song? Realising that, like, if she keeps on this trajectory, she's going to find herself in the ground, you know? Um, <laughs> amazing kind of realisations from her. It just kind of really feels... I just love, like, that we're following her, like, internal journey, like... And it's so raw and un- unedited, isn't it, you know? Yeah, amazing. Let's go on to the next song. This is C2.0. So she's gone through therapy and now she's... It's the 2.0 version of Charlie. Okay, we're back to the high distortion. It's the real light juxtaposition between the kind of beautiful pad and like the really harsh stuff. <laughs> Next level, yeah. Okay, we're back to this vibe, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> This is weird. <laughs> I don't even know what that word is. More nostalgia. Oh, click, like, like your group of friends, right? Oh, missing your friends, I think. Love this. Yeah, it feels like she's missing her friends, right? That's the click, you know? For me, like, it seems to represent, like, this, you know, time where we couldn't see our friends. And, like, it's almost like a kind of... Like, her getting lost in the beauty of it, if, in the beauty of like, the memories that they made together when they could be together. Like, there's a lot of that on this album. Living in old memories because we can't make new ones kind of thing. Like, the beginning of it, I wasn't crazy fan of, like, the beginning section. But once it all kind of broke down to the click, 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 and went into the next section, I really liked that. That was a lot smoother, a lot nicer. Yeah, I miss them by my side. I miss them every night. Catch my tears when I cry. My click on me for life. So, yeah, missing her friends. Okay, let's go on to the next one. This is song number nine. This is Party For You. I quite like this already, actually. Sounds kind of hopeful. This one. I wonder who, um, maybe it's her boyfriend. I don't know, I'm not. The idea of throwing a party for one person is a very uh, lockdown-y thing, isn't it? <laughs> you know, because <laughs> no one else can come. <laughs> I like how the, the mixture of swung and not swung is quite interesting, isn't it? This is very, I like this. The synth here is really satisfying for some reason. <laughs> Ooh. Cool. I love that music, hey. <laughs> cool. I love these, like, layered harmonies. Nice. 
Maybe it's this idea that like, like she wants to throw a party with all her friends, but she can't, you know. It sounds like a crowd there. Yeah. But there can't be a crowd. Yeah, well. Maybe it's like her thinking about like her performances and not being able to perform to her fans anymore. This party that she's throwing in her kind of own small, like, and kind of, like, the feelings that it's throwing up by kind of doing this album. Like, that one really did feel like a journey. Very soft and very gentle and kind of went through lots of different phases. Um, that one definitely felt very open-ended. It was kind of held down by this, like, century, central hook. But, yeah, like, still went through a lot of different kind of places, um, like, production-wise. It was really cool. I only threw this party for you, threw this party for you. So it's like this idea that she's throwing a party, um, hoping one person's gonna come and they don't come. I'm not sure who she's singing about. Maybe she's like looking back at something that she did. I threw a whole party hoping that you would come. I made got the DJ to play all your favorite songs and I was just waiting for you to come because I love you and then I wanna party on you and I really wanna, you know, have sex with you. And uh, yeah, but I'm not sure like what that kind of represents in terms of the story of the album so far. Um, yeah, I don't know, let me know what you think. Um, oh, something I just remembered that I need to talk about. Um, so I have recently set up a Discord server, and it's basically like, I want it to be like a little place where a kind of little community that we're building on YouTube can kind of have a place to interact and have a place to share music with each other. Yeah, so the invite link is in the description if you wanted to check out the Discord, and I'll be in there too. Let's go on to the penultimate song. This is Anthems. <laughs> I'm so bored. <laughs> okay, this is lockdown vibes, isn't it? My god, relatable. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That sound is really cool. Uh. I just want to go to parties, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I like this, actually. Nice. Wow. That was really cool. <laughs> That song really kind of, I think, represents, like, quite centrally, like, sums up the frustration of lockdown. It's like she's gone through all these kind of internal weird places, and then she's just like, oh my god, f*** this. You know, she's got to a point where it's just like, I just want to go to a party, I just want to go out with my friends, I just want to be at a concert, I just want to do all this stuff this situation you know and she really sums it up in so many different levels i was like oh my god yeah oh my god yeah oh my god that's exactly how it was you know yeah <laughs> and it kind of like plays out like this kind of like naughty's club banger anthem yeah got like one foot in the kind of nostalgia still i'm so bored wake up late eat some cereal try my best to be physical lose myself in a tv show staring out to oblivion all my friends are invisible Boom, 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 boom. This is what it was like to be in lockdown. Like, she's just like spitting relatable lines. <laughs> I might cry like a waterfall. I feel afraid when I feel alone. Online shopping, I'm so uninspired. I just want to breathe flowers and trees, dirt on my knees. I get existential so strange. I hear no sounds when I'm shouting. Really good. And it's really just like, I think, yeah, it just sums it all up. And, and the kind of energy of the song really is that kind of pent up frustration and pent up kind of like feeling that you just want to get it all out so she's like made this song just being like i want to get it all out <laughs> you know and it is really yeah satisfying like it really cool okay before we go into the last song if you haven't already then make sure to subscribe to the channel because obviously you you must be liking this video and if you want to check out my next week's video now i don't know what that is i've filmed this way too far in advance but if you want to check out next week's video now you can do it on the patreon by checking out the Weep Weepy Wendy tier. And yeah, if you want to get involved in the community, then I also have a Discord server going. All the links for everything is in the description. My music as well. Boom, 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 boom. Just go into the description if you want more. Um, okay, let's go. Final song. This is Visions. <laughs> Just in my mind, I can see it so clearly so
got pictures in my mind I can see you so clearly. Maybe like dreaming of the future. It does feel like she's spent the whole album looking back and now she's trying to look forward, you know? Yeah. Wow, this is great. I feel like if you heard this in a club, it would just be so euphoric. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> wow, this is going so hard. It's kind of ironic because <laughs> you couldn't go to a club at this point. Club at home. <laughs> Maybe it's like in anticipation of being able to listen to this in a club. Maybe that's why she made it. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Spooky. Just kind of falling apart. Sounds like a siren, doesn't it? Wow. Baby. Baby. That, yeah, oh, I quite liked how that last song, yeah, it seemed to be kind of like looking forward, you know, I've got pictures in my mind, you know, thinking that like maybe there is a future, like there's a bit of empt uh, optimism there. Yeah, I think the reason that it went into like a real kind of, the ending was like instrumental kind of club banger, this kind of finale moment for her to almost take it to the club, you know, um, almost like trying to manifest the clubs being open again, in a sense. Yeah, because it did feel like the whole album was getting lost in nostalgia, really, like, assessing what was going on, being lost in your head, being lost in the past, and then that song was like, oh, we need to start looking forward, you know? Yeah, I've got pictures in my mind, I can see it so clearly, I see it all so bright, never seen a future so real, maybe I'm just fantasising, finally I think I'm realising, all these voices telling me to hold on, soon he'll kiss me, pull me close, so close gripping you so hard. Maybe trying to envision a future with her partner and trying to envision a future outside of her bedroom and like maybe going back to the club and going back to normal life. Which I hope she's found with this new album, like, you know, with Crash, you know, she's finally put a release out and she can perform again, you know, she's touring, she came to London. You know, things are going back to normal, some places slower than others, but um, like I really appreciate her kind of using that as a final song because it does feel like the album as as a whole was incredibly introspective and anxious and depression depress depressing <laughs> and depressing and like this idea that she was like really letting it all hang out being very vulnerable in terms of her deepest fears going through this like really 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 difficult year or whatever and so to kind of have a song that i think she needed to put a song on the end that had a bit of hope to it yeah, but I do think that like that kind of quite nicely puts a kind of pin on in that on that in that feeling kind of saying this is the album of its time, um, and it has a begin it has a beginning, middle, and end, and ends quite being like you know we just got to look towards the future. That's all we can do. Yeah, and it kind of sums it up really nicely and creates like a kind of full package of an album. So overall, I'm really 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 impressed. Like it didn't go so hard with the hyper pop that it excluded me. I think like some of the hyper pop stuff I have heard is like pushed me so far that I'm just like I wouldn't listen to that. But this like and that's kind of what I was anticipating, but it didn't do that. It it kind of still had a lot of like uh subtlety, intimacy, vulnerability and I really appreciate that. And I really appreciate that she kind of took us in got vulnerable with us but I do think that the kind of the palette that she the palette of sounds that she used was really very good for this kind of album because it kind of the vulnerability and the kind of softness um juxtaposed with the harshness I think really represents the situation in which we all found ourselves where we were getting very vulnerable and very emotional but there was this a supreme level of frustration and anger and it's like all those sounds are kind of like summed up w within this juxtaposition with the sounds that she used on the album you know I feel like an album that sounded solely vulnerable intimacy wouldn't be reflecting the anxiety and the frustration and vice versa if it was an album that was just harshness and just anxiety and frustration then it wouldn't be reflecting the softer intimate times um, that we had during lockdown so 
it does kind of encapsulate all of that. Music historians are going to look back at this album and think this is a product of its time, this is a unique piece of work that reflects exactly what it was to go through that. Um, and it's really fascinating and brilliantly, brilliantly done. I'm very, very impressed. I think my favourite songs, uh, Seven Years, Destiny, Enemy, like that whole centre bit of the album I really liked. And then Anthems was brilliant too. Cool. That was great. I was really, really impressed by that. Let me know if you want me to do any more Charlie XCX reactions. I think there are a couple more albums I haven't reacted to, but I'm not sure whether people are that interested in those ones, lol. Um, of course, let me know. Um, if you want to, if you want to request anything on Patreon, then you can do. Yeah. Cool. Before we sign off, thank you so much to my Weeping Wendy patrons. Their names are appearing on screen now. These guys have supported me to an extra level to kind of live my life as this kind of creative person. Um, so thank you so much for that. If you want to join up the Patreon, get your videos early, get them uncut, and request me to react to any song that you want or album, then head over to the Patreon and consider supporting me. I really appreciate it. I will see you again next week for another video. If not, you can check out all my others, uh, Charlie XTX reactions here. Cool. <laughs> right. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Bye.